Amen. Amen. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, Jesus. We're just so proud of you, Missionary Watson. And she is so faithful. And whatever we ask her to do, she's always right there. And we thank God for you. Amen. Anyone else on the line? We want to ask for prayer for my brother. He's back in the hospital. He had another heart attack. And I, we just, we just, we just holding him up in prayer at this time. It's running into all kinds of complications. So pray for him. Continue to pray for him in Jesus' name. Anyone else here in this sanctuary? Thank you. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let's go. That's right. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And you know, we in a race, saints. We in a race. Uh, and, and we got to get to the finish line. You know, we got to finish. We can't come halfway and get tired and say, you know what? I'm tired. I ain't going to run no more for you, Jesus. I'm just not. I'm tired. I got things to do. You know, the devil tries to tell you that sometimes when you know, he, he, especially when you, you, you're tired, the devil tries to tell you, don't go today. You know, it's too hot or it's too cold or it's too this or it's too that, you know. Oh, excuses, excuses. But we're in a race. And we got to finish. Can't no halfway doing. We got to finish this race, no matter what. And that's when that, that, that determination kick in, because we know who we serve. And it's the same thing when you got a job out there. You, sometimes you wake up and you're tired and you don't feel like going, but you better get up and go, because if you don't go, you might not get that paycheck. You might get that paycheck, but it might not be what you think it's going to be. So. You know, people do what they want to do, saints. So once you make up your mind that you're going to serve God, I don't care if it's one, I don't care if it's two or three, you're still going to do, you're going to do it because you have a mind to serve the Lord. Amen. Anybody else with a prayer request or a praise report? God is so good to us. Look at us. Look, just look at us. God is good. 
Yeah, we might have a few aches and pains in our body. You know, we might have some problems we don't want to talk about, but we're here. We're still here, and he's blessed us to be here, and we ought to praise him. We ought to praise him every chance we get because tomorrow is not promised in Jesus' name. God bless you all, and we're going to turn to service. Oh, sorry. Deacon Joe. Amen. Amen. My Lord, Jesus. What a mighty God. Amen. Yes, he is. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. privilege it is to worship this morning. What a privilege it is to call his name. Oh, there's so much suffering going on in the world. And there's no other name under the heavens whereby men must be saved. But really, there's no other name and no other God who will turn things around like the Lord Jesus Christ the one and only God. We want to thank God for being back from our international convention where Lord brought us through the airways safe and sound. I understand this morning they're canceling flights all over the country. Down in Florida, we're uh, getting ready the early stages of a terrible hurricane. And they say 140 million Americans are affected by the heat on this day. Out in Phoenix, Death Valley, it hit something like 120 degrees. Yeah. And there are people there with no air conditioning, no fans, no nothing. But God, the grace of God keeps them alive and keeps them there. I want to thank you for your all the hard workers who in our absence uh, brought amen and served and worshiped. I want to thank Elder Franklin for preaching last Sunday and Elder Simmons and all of you who labor here at Macedonia. Sister Callie, I was working on a film last night and it shows her with a solo which we will be showing and being able to publish. I want to thank God for Ryan and Deacon Beaver, who have worked very hard. You see the bathrooms that have been renovated, and uh, you see the work that's being done. Work is going to continue. And the uh, last time I was here, we commended Ryan for his work, and he was having no back trouble, but God has touched his body. And he's with us today. Let's give Ryan a hand. Before I make the announcements, I wonder if you had any uh, update for us very quickly. And then we must move on to our period of praise and worship. We thank God for you out there in the Zoom. 
You're here, many of you, from many parts of the country, and we appreciate your coming. At this time, remember the Ryan Spellman. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be back home at our Macedonia Church of Christ one more time. Um, we are, I said this before and I'm saying it again, we are doing great things here at Macedonia Church of Christ. Amen? amen. I didn't get such a great amen. Amen? Amen. 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 So we are uh, very pleased. We thank God for our leaders, our pastor, Bishop Spellman, Lady Spellman. Was, if it not been for his vision, a lot of this work... Uh, would have gone undone. So we thank God for giving our pastor, our bishop, a vision. The bathrooms are completed. We want to thank you all for all your contributions. They are absolutely stunning. Gorgeous, gorgeous. But we still have more work to do, saints. And uh, part of worship is giving, as the pastor always says. We're next getting ready to tack on our next uh, project which will be painting the sanctuary and we really need your support all those who have been constantly contributing we thank you from the bottom of our hearts we know the Lord is going to continue to bless you in a very special way so pray for us there's always work to be done here at church if you're a homeowner you always know there's work or project always something to do so continue to pray for our leaders and each one of us to continue to keep us youthful, energized, and on fire for the Lord to keep his house in order. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ryan. And we thank you, Deacon Beaver, for all your work. And uh, Mother Beaver, and that grass stays cut. I never saw it manicured like it's manicured. And on behalf of all of us, we want to thank you. Amen. You can tell people walk by Macedonia, they see upkeep, they see, amen, cleanliness, they see, amen, amen, a church in the heart of this community with the people of the community in its heart. By way of announcement, don't forget on Wednesday nights, is our Bible class, more and more people are coming on from across the breadth and the length of this country, uh, people want to know Bible truth. And we're up against it right now in this world. As a person looks at the world, they need to see what the Word of God says, that these things would be, but that he would bring us through. And so I want to thank all of you who have been praying for us in whatever we seem to do Bible said, whatever thy hands find to do, do it with all thy might. And uh, I tell you, I see Ryan motivated, but he's just so on fire for working and doing the work here at Macedonia. And I just want to thank him and Deacon Beaver and uh, Deacon Joe and uh, last Sunday, Elder Franklin, uh, yeah. uh, as he spoke here. Yeah. And a pastor oh, feels right. good when he can leave the church in hand of someone who is going to preach the word. So don't forget on Wednesday night Bible class, don't forget on Saturday morning. Oh, what a time we have on Saturday morning prayer. And uh, there's much uh, going on right now in the political world, uh, but God has it all under control. And the last time we were here, we preached the Subject, Jesus Christ, the, gate, the great game changer. And we had talked about how things looked and appeared uh, that Sunday morning. That Sunday afternoon, you could see God working on the project, turning it around. Amen. Amen. God has made some changes. He is the great change maker. I'm telling you, he'll turn it around. Amen. And we are seeing some things that we never thought we would see before. And so, therefore, all you want to do is praise God. Praise him. As the Psalm 150, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise the Lord. 
so grateful to see you, Sister Katrina, and, and uh, those who went to Florida, went on vacation. God brought us back. And the prayer, the praises this morning, the prayer has been answered. We want you to continue to pray for my brother-in-law, my wife's brother, who is uh, very ill, but God. The Bible said, but God who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us. And he's going to bring him out. He is a preacher of the gospel. And we want him to continue the work that was begun in him. That's what the Bible said. Continue the work that was done Amen. and begun in you. Yes. And he will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Lady Spellman and I want to again thank you for how Amen. you cooperate with us yes. uh, in your tithes and your offerings. Uh, that's consistent. Uh, all the way down in Florida, my sister Cheryl, amen, she loved Macedonia. Amen. Always supporting Macedonia. And there are people from all over the country sending in offerings because they see workers for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So uh, at this time, we want to have our meditation and move right along in our period of worship and praise. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are so glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. God has kept us from last week to this week, and we are grateful through whatever you went through, ups and downs, good and bad, but we're grateful to just be in the house of the Lord again amongst the saints. Amen. This is our meditation where we certainly take that time to reflect on the goodness of the Lord. Reflect, oh, look, on all that he's done for us. Because sometimes we may take so many things for granted. Just being able to be in your home and turn on the lights just to have, you know, the air conditioning and different things to keep you comfortable. All those things that, you know, God have just blessed you with, big and small. We just want to meditate on his goodness in Jesus' name. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. To save, to heal, and to forgive. He, he bled and he died just to buy my pardon and empty. his son they called him Jesus he came to save to heal and to forgive he bled and he died just to buy
tomorrow because he lives all my fears they are gone because I know who holds my future and life is worth Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all my fears, all my Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. I mean, that's a great and wonderful thing to know, that you have God on your side. Lord Jesus Christ, we come this morning as empty pictures before a full fountain. We come to bring your word, to bring what you have prescribed needs to be said. Bless this message. Use these clay lips. Use us as the waiter coming out of your kitchen with food of encouragement and joy. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to return to a thought that I've had that stays with you. Sometime a message will stay with you and the Lord will show you something else. And this morning we are looking at the news and we see a possibility of a woman becoming the President of the United States, an African American woman. And sometimes we don't realize how good God is. He's working on things when you think it's all a lost cause. But all is not lost. Amen. We saw in the news, and I said to you, God is the great change maker, game changer, Lord Jesus Christ. He has many titles, but he is the great uh, game changer. I want you to put this in your thinking cap and in your receiving cap this morning. Taking a hit and staying afloat. Taking a hit and staying afloat. If you go over to New York, You'll see a great big aircraft carrier, which has become a museum. It has become a place that ordinary citizens could not visit before. And you can go into that museum and see an aircraft carrier from top to bottom. And, uh, but when I went to see it, I looked on the side of this giant ship. And as I looked on the side of it, I saw where there was a big hole that had been welded. But the ship 
was still afloat. It had been hit, but it was still afloat. It may have dragged itself in as the pilot of the ship or the captain of the ship, but it was still afloat. I want to liken this morning taking a hit to that suffering that we must endure as people of God. There are a lot of people who think when they come to Christ, all the problems are over. And that's just sometimes the worst uh, period of time. You don't have people who strengthen you. People think when their problems aren't solved or get worse, that they made a mistake coming to Christ. But that's when the devil's going to hit you the hardest to make you turn back. But I know some people who will never turn back. We've been hit, but we're still afloat. We've suffered, but we are still afloat. Amen. There's a cost to following Jesus Christ in what we call the core curriculum of suffering. I don't care who you are, you go to a college or you go to a high school, but we have in the college a core curriculum. Everybody has to take that or you will not graduate. Everybody has to take English. Everyone has to take literature and history and mathematics and biology. That's a core, we call it the core curriculum. Well, part of the major core curriculum when you decide to follow Jesus is you're gonna have to suffer and uh, some people don't like that, but people grow in suffering. Suffering is a part of the core curriculum. And this, a friend of mine, Bishop Blygens, preached one time, life is not a bed of roses. Amen. The life of someone committed to Christ is not a bed of roses. You don't get handed the keys to your yacht. And you can sail around or new this. That's when started some of your suffering starts right when you come to Christ. He's going to test you out to see if he can drive you out. And so no one escapes the threat of attack coming from the devil. I look uh, on the History Channel and I see ships that have been destroyed uh, by uh, submarines and all kind of torpedoes. I've seen ships that have been bombed and they have been sunk. But I know some people of God who are still afloat. They've been hit with all kinds of circumstances. And it's not physical all the time. Some people think it's a physical illness and when you've been hit with a heart condition or you've been hit with a certain particular physical uh, problem, they think that's what's all to taking a hit. But I know somebody who's taking a hit and they come out stronger than they were when they went in. What is taking a hit? A bomb in your life. There are mothers out there who have raised their kids when their husbands walked out. There are many women who I commend our men, women. I'm so proud of you all. I'm proud of us men, but I'm telling you, you women who raise families, single heads of household. We have lots of them at Essex County College. They're there trying not only to boost their children, but to come to college themselves. And so we are told that a hit is something physical. You break down. But people can criticize you and discourage you. They shoot at you in order to sink your ship. 
There are relatives. I hate to say this, but there's some relatives that can say some things sometimes. It's a hit. You thought they loved you, but they really were mad. They're really envious. God has blessed you, and they're mad. And they will shoot at you. And you have to be able to take a hit and stay afloat. Well, brother preacher, how do you say that? Jesus predicted that all who would follow him have to suffer. In the world, we have tribulation, but he also urges us to take heart since he has overcome the world. Amen. You always have me. And some of the Lord's most cherished people I'm looking and talking to this morning are those faithful warriors who know how to take a hit and stay afloat. Know how to be wounded. And there's some people out there right now who are wounded. They are angry. They don't know which way to turn. So in the book of Matthew, the uh, 16th chapter, Jesus said unto the disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The cross is a symbol of suffering. You don't go up on a cross to go sightseeing. You don't go up on the cross, amen, just to be a little higher than someone else. They hang you up there with nails. And crucifixion, the Romans used to use crucifixion because it was a slow death. They didn't want you to die right away. They didn't want you to have and feel the pain, feel those nails in you. And I know the Lord Jesus Christ, you thought he was going to take a hit. And you thought when they nailed him on the cross, that he was going down. But he rose, crying, all power on heaven and earth is in my hand. And I have the keys of death and hell. Hallelujah. I rose. I've been hit. Those nails hurt. I've been hit. But because I'm afloat, I love that song y'all just sang, because he lives. We live. You don't live because of your vitamins. They got all kind of vitamins now, and, and I'm guilty too. I take those vegetables and fruit pills. Nothing wrong with adding to that. But that's not what keeps you in the spiritual sense. You got to have more than that. You got to have Jesus on your side. And you got to be able to take up your cross and follow him. Yes, Hallelujah. The Bible said, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father and his angels. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. You shouldn't think it's strange. In First Peter, it tells us uh, concerning uh, a fiery furnace that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went in. But I love the fact that they say, if you will not bow down and worship the master that I put up, the golden image, if you don't worship him, we will throw you into the fiery furnace. And I love what they say. We'll be careful, old king. But we will not serve the golden image. Hallelujah. Our God. See, this way we get out, we're going to stay afloat. Our God is able to keep us from the fiery furnace. And you know the story, I won't go into it. But, but Nebuchadnezzar was furious. And they put him in and put them in. The people who built the fire, they burn up. And so... And that's the thing you have to see. And Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fiery furnace and saw the three. They weren't burning up. They weren't crying. But what you have to see is, before your enemy hits you, Jesus goes before you. Yeah. And the Bible says, I'll go before you 
I'll fight for you. So before they went into the fire, Jesus went in ahead of them. Before you go to the operating table, Jesus go before you. Before you face that problem, Jesus goes into it with you. Go into the operating room with you. I'm already there. So when they threw him in the fire, Jesus was already there in the problem. And God is in some of your problems. That's why you're not a sunk ship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who bear, who hit, he bore our sins. He took a lot of sins on the cross for us. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For we were as sheep who have gone astray. Hallelujah. But you, Paul said, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk also as they have us for an example. God made you to be an example. A ship that can go out and be hit by all kind of bombs. All kind of criticism, all kind of suffering, all kind of name calling, all kind of shortages. You don't have enough money for rent. You don't have enough money for food. Amen. Food going all up out of the sky. I've never seen things. Uh, somebody wanted to charge for a McDonald's. I hope I don't get sued here, but I heard they wanted they wanted twenty dollars for a McDonald's hamburger. Amen. And you see. Uh, everything is going up. Yeah. Everything is going out of whack. And then the stock market fell the other day. A whole lot of people took a hit. Yeah. Hallelujah. They're up there talking about the stock market is higher than it's ever been. And God will take and show you. And next thing we know, the other day, dropped 400 points. And during the depression time, there were people who went out and committed suicide because they lost their fortunes in the stock market. But a lot of battles have been fought and won by what I call the wounded saints of God. You know, it's not a bad thing because as Mother Bessie Jones said one time, the devil tried to get me, but because of Jesus, I got away again. I love that message. It's a whole message. He said, the devil tried to get me, but because of Jesus, I got away again. And we are told to pray, and, and the Lord said, I'm going to make it even though you, if you're going to sail for me, I'm going to give you a breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to give you a helmet of salvation. I'm going to give you a shield of faith. I'm going to charge Make sure your feet are charred with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then uh, the devil can bond you and beat you up, but I want you to win. You have some weapons too. You have defensive weapons, but you also have an offensive weapon. And so take the, and the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Are y'all with me? So the devil can't beat you down and put you and sink your ship. But God doesn't want you so that you just stay afloat. He's going to want you to win this battle. Hallelujah. So I give you the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And you come out with that sword. Let them throw their bomb. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I will Stand up, and I will stir up. Amen. Though the earth be removed, I'm talking about the word now, though the mountains be cast to the sea, God is my refuge and my strength. And then, praying always. Hallelujah. How come you weren't sunk? Because Jesus kept me afloat. Jesus, I called him. And he kept me afloat. You know, Job took a lot of hits. He had money. He had animals. He had cattle. He had land. So the devil said, let me go in there. I'm making sure that 
I'll hit him hard. I'll take everything with him. Amen. The devil was time. And so the Lord said, consider my servant Job. See, when God recommends you for suffering, are you all with me? He know you're not going to let him down. You wonder why some of your friends never suffer or what have you. But God knows you can take it. Amen. You can stand the storm. You can stand the test. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brother, I didn't understand it, but he was playing on the football team up at Westside High School. And the coach would come out every day and kick him. And he would shove him. And he would punch him. He would kick him, trying to toughen them up. Amen. So that when they went out in the football game, that's why I never played football. <laughs> because you do that, in my day, you, you, you wouldn't be pushing me around. But the point is, that was to toughen him up. Know what, what I'm trying to tell you? That in a lot of suffering, and people who have been through suffering will tell you they came out stronger spiritually because of that suffering. They came out with new growth. They came out with a new understanding. They come out with a new drive. They come out stronger. And it's like a tree in the middle of the storm. Amen. It's going back in the wind, but it's going back and forth, but the roots are going deeper. And when the storm is over, the tree is taller and the tree is strong. Hallelujah. So Job, he lost everything. But God will pay you for your suffering. You'll take a hit, but God's going to bless you. And Job received double. I heard a sermon one time, double for your trouble. God will give you double what you have. The Bible said, above all that you can ask or think. Hallelujah. So when you've been hit and the disciples were in jail, and they were put in jail. You look at the book of Acts, and you'll see where uh, they beat them up and commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. And then they let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, they went on and did what Jesus told them to do. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The devil will try to sink you, but because of Jesus, you're still afloat. I took a hit, but I'm still afloat. I'm making it on into the shore because Jesus made a way for me to stay afloat. I know it hurt during the time, but God will bring you out, and he's able to deliver you, as the Bible said, above all that you could ask or think. Hallelujah. I think about my friend, Elder Roy Clayton, who we saw down at the convention, and he stood right here in this pulpit one time, and he preached a great sermon. Can you take it? That's what his sermon was. Can you take it? Hallelujah. And, and, and the scripture, you read 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 13, verse, if you can't take it, God's not going to let you go down. He'll make a way of escape, the Bible said, that ye may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Make your way out. He's not going to let you go down. You like Irish soap when you're with Jesus. Amen. Irish soap can't Stay down under the water. When you got Jesus in you, I don't care how many times they push you down. I don't care how many times they break you down. You're coming up when they push you down. Coming off somewhere in the pond, somewhere in the lake, you're going to come up again. You can't push. You can't sink. Hallelujah. You can take a hit, but you're going to stay afloat. So despite the predictors and what they're saying, Right now, we have a situation in the country where we can't make any predictions. Hallelujah. And we're willing to take a hit. I see a candidate, a woman, who stepped out, one of the most brilliant women I've ever seen, to be a candidate for president. 
and they just want to run her name down and run her reputation down. Even say she's not even an African American. Amen. Devil will use everything he can, but she's still afloat because somebody's praying for her. I'm praying for her. You pray for her because she stands for God's people. She wants God's people fed. She wants those babies educated. She wants people with health care not to lose their health care. God got somebody who know how to take a hit beside you. But I'm going to stand and make my way to the port because Jesus is keeping me afloat. Hallelujah. Did Jesus say, uh, a, a sister used to sing a song, the doctors had given me up, but I made it. The lawyers had turned their back, but I made it. Hallelujah. My family turned against me, but I made it. Hallelujah. I made it to the other side. And Jesus didn't promise you that you wouldn't go through storms, but he promised you a safe landing. You're going to be saved. He told Apostle Paul, not a hair on the head of any of these people will all, they'll all be saved. And they were thinking about their ship. And the ship broke up in the 27th chapter of Acts. And the ship broke up. But the Bible says some came in on boards. Some came, but not one was lost. When God said, I don't care how they sink your ship, how they push you down. It's not God who said, I'll save your ship. He didn't die for your ship. He died for you. Your soul. What doth it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So we want you to keep that thought in mind and learn how to take a hit and stay afloat. You know, when you're boxing in the boxing ring, amen, and the devil, uh, I studied all the, doc, uh, uh, the boxers and uh, it was one day he was so powerful, if you went near his left hook, you were gone. But Muhammad Abi, he fought with a strategy. And uh, he would put his hands down, say, come on, come on. And they would trace him and chase him all over the ring. And he'd be working on one eye. He'd work on that one eye to about the eighth round. And when that eye started to bleed, that's when he would close in. See, the devil thinks he's working on your eye. Got you bleeding. Gonna get, you gonna get up. But I'm telling you, God has a way that keeps you afloat. You can't lose. You cannot lose because God goes into the ring with you. He goes with you to fight. He goes with you to keep you. He does, goes with you. And some of you are lonely right now. You lost your loved ones. You lost your friends. And you lost uh, so much. But look and see what you have. All that's not lost. Look at what's left. You are saved soul. Look at what's left. Hallelujah. Somebody can rejoice and praise God. Look at who's left. I'm going to call his name. I'm going to praise his name. I'm going to lift up his name. Taking a float. Taking a hit. And staying afloat. I wonder if we have someone this morning who wants to board this ship. I'm here to tell you you board the ship of Christ, you're going to make it. Hallelujah. And, and this is the way Bishop Lawson did. I don't know if you've ever heard of Fats Waller, but Fats Waller was a great a musician during the 20s and 30s. And uh, his father belonged to Refuge Temple in New York, Greater Refuge on 133rd Street. My mother was a member there. And uh, 
That deacon, when he would come, when Fats Waller and all his fame would come into New York, he'd always come up to church and he'd tell Bishop Lawson, Bishop, God has called me to be a preacher. And he said, all right. He said, but I'm going to go over on this tour. And when I come back, I'm going to start preaching. Well, he went over and he came back and he went to Bishop Lawson again. He said, Bishop, I'm going to preach, but I just want to make this one more tour. And so he went out again. He did that the third time. But the third time, he didn't come back. And when he came back, he came back in a coffin. And Bishop Lawson preached his funeral. And you know what his subject was? Ships that never sail. Loaded up with power. Loaded up with talent. Loaded up with gifts. But never sailing out of the port. God made you to be a ship. It's going to be hit, but you're going to make it on the other side. You're carrying the message of God. You're carrying the love of God. You're carrying the wealth of God. You're carrying the message of God. And because you call God, going to make sure those on the other side waiting to be fed, waiting to be saved, waiting to be preached to, that you're going to sail out into the cargo. Someone this morning, I said to you before, the greatest moment in your life is the moment you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That takes you from this mortal life to a heavenly life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want us to know, amen, Bishop Richardson, you sing a song. He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Oh, everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. The Bible says, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you are here, someone who's sick or just want prayer, won't you come at this time? Oh, he never fails. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Oh, everywhere, everywhere I go, I want the world to know. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. my 
hand and you said I will tomorrow Jesus said I am the who supplies all your Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Spellman, and we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ here at the wonderful, beautiful Macedonia Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, right here at 569 Broadway here in Newark. And Lady Spellman, the first lady, a missionary worker, a worker, a one who loves the Lord and happens to be my lovely wife, she's here too to welcome you. We want you to tune in to our Bible lessons on the website. We want you to tune in to our services that are put on the air for around the country. So we welcome you to the Macedonia Church. Lady Spellman. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you in that matchless name, Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, we want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to the Macedonia Church of Christ Apostolic, located at 569 Broadway in Newark, New Jersey. So we encourage you all to join us every Sunday morning, beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. So come on out and enjoy us. We would love to have you. We are a small family here, but we are a loving family. So come on out and join us in Jesus' name. Also, don't forget our Wednesday night Bible class. It comes at 7.30. Uh, it comes on Zoom. If you have a computer or you have a phone, you can have a great meal in the Lord, the Lord's Word. I'm just the waiter, but we bring you Bible lessons that will enrich you and lift you and encourage you. So that's on Wednesday night at 7.30 each week. And then on Saturday morning, we have a one-hour prayer 
where we just enjoy God, but praying for people in need, praying for you. Mm -hmm. So we invite you to the Macedonia Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Okay, I got two more. <laughs>